Let's go start to finish running a test of a proportion using stat key. I'm going to pull from the example we had earlier with the uh, coffee. We wanted to know uh, the proportion of large coffee sold if it was going to go up uh, when we mentioned would you like a large uh, or if the null hypothesis was going to be true that changing what you say to customers was not going to change the proportion of customers that actually bought from you. We had our alpha of 0.05. The next step we need to do is go out and actually collect some data. So in this case, uh, I decided that we're going to randomly choose six one-hour clusters to run the experiment. So we're going to find one-hour periods during uh, the workday, and instead of saying what we normally say, we're going to say, would you like a large, uh, when we ask people what size they would like. And during that time, we're going to see what proportion of customers end up ordering a large coffee. Let's say our results came back as 48 out of 103. So we talked to 103 customers during those six one hour periods and 48 of them bought a large. Now this is more than 37%. The question is, is, is it more enough? Is it high enough to actually convince us that it's more than just random chance? It actually was what we were doing. Was it the asking them if they want a large that made the difference? So we're gonna throw our data, our 48 out of 103, uh, into StatKey, and we're going to use a test of proportions. So if you're on the StatKey uh, homepage here, you're going to see our descriptive statistics, the confidence intervals, and then the hypothesis tests over on the far right. And the test that we're going to do is a test of a single proportion, because we're dealing with a proportion of our population. So we click on that. And the very first thing you're going to want to do is go to edit your data. And it's going to ask you for a count and a sample size. Now the count is how many successes you had, the 48 larges that were purchased, and your sample size was that 103. So 48 out of 103. And I would always recommend doing this part first just because there's some glitchy things with StatKey. So we type that in. The next thing we need to do, uh, we can't just start generating right away like we can with confidence intervals. We have to determine what our null hypothesis is going to be. And in this case, it starts out with the default 1.5. We're going to change that to p equals 0.37, the 37%. So p equals 0.37. And once we set our null and we have our data in here, uh, we can see over here our original sample. It's going to randomly create samples like that and we can start with one at a time or just get right to it and generate a few thousand. And unlike uh, the confidence intervals where the curve is centered around our sample proportion, 0.466, uh, the curve is going to be sampled around our null hypothesis the computer will random, uh, automatically shift the data to be around the null uh, so that we can get a better sense of what different values are unlikely. And we'll talk about why that matters later. I'm going to change this randomization dot plot here from proportion to count. And the reason I care about that when I'm dealing with proportions is because uh, sometimes you can get some strange rounding errors and we don't want to have to worry about that. Our original sample was 48 out of 103. And I had a alternative hypothesis that said, I think it is larger than 37%. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, and figure out what is possibly larger than our original sample data. So I click the right tail, right tail being the larger end. And I'm gonna change this value here of 48 to, ironically, 48. And the reason I actually still had to change it, even though it had the right value typed in for me, is because it was setting it to be uh, 0.025 up here, uh, and it did not include all the dots in this row. So I want to make sure I just reset that. So I typed in my 48 down here, and I chose the right tail because I had a test that said uh, the proportion of large coffee goes up. Uh, it's greater than 37%. 
and I see here this number, 0 0.030. And I can generate more samples to see how well that number holds up. And it looks like it's a pretty robust number, so maybe it's 0 0.027, something like that. But it's approximately 0 0.03, or 3% 3 chance that I'm going to get a 48 or larger if the null hypothesis is true. That 0 0.03, that 3% 3 chance, is what we call the p-value. Now don't confuse this p here for p-value with this p here for proportion. They don't look anything different, but we're always going to just call it the p-value, even if it says p equals 0.03, just because we don't want those two to get mixed up. It's complicated. I didn't make it up, so blame somebody else. So our p-value is 0.03. Now we have to decide what to do with that. The thing that we do is we compare that number to the cutoff value, that alpha value, that probability that we picked ahead of time. We said that 5% was unlikely enough to be convinced that the null probably wasn't true. We got 0.03. That's less than 0.05. That means that we are reasonably convinced that the null hypothesis is not true. So we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Our goal is to smash the null and that's exactly what we did. This is unlikely enough that we reject the null. And when you reject the null, there's only one hypothesis left to choose from. And that would be the alternative. That P is greater than 37% of the population. That the proportion of large coffees does in fact go up when you ask this new question.